Uh, my name is Josephine Efa Chukuma, and I'm the Executive Director of Project Alert Environment in New Zealand. Project Alert is 13 years this year. Um, we started January 1999, and basically Project Alert was set up to promote and protect the rights of women and young girls. And we do this by through providing information on various forms of violence against women, and uh, more importantly for us, providing practical support services to women and young girls who are already uh, experiencing one form of violation or the other. So that's, in a nutshell, that's what Project Ola does. Being a woman, being a young girl in this society, uh, I was, I'm a Nigerian, I was born here, I grew up here, I had my primary and secondary up to university education here. I only went out briefly for two years to do my masters and I came back. And as a child growing up, you know, even in Lagos here, all around me, you, know, you keep seeing things that makes you ask questions that sometimes you don't really have answers to. You know, for example, I remember when I was eight or nine years old, there was a neighbor, a uh, Yoruba woman was married to an evil man and the husband died. And uh, I saw the way there was so much trouble in the compound. And I was one day we were just standing looking, peeping as children, and we saw relatives coming, people carrying chairs out, people carrying tables out, people carrying, and I was like, what's going on here? Yeah, somebody has died, what is all this carrying of stuff? Are they moving out or something? You know? And then growing up also, being in school, being in university, having friends who go out on dates, come back, boyfriends are beating them. What happened to you? We had a fight. You know, and, and so we had a lot of questions. So, Growing up, I saw quite a lot of injustices. I mean, I at that time I didn't understand it to be injustices. They were just they were just issues I didn't really understand. And at some point, I was actually afraid being a young girl. I said, "What's going on? It's like there's something going on that one is not explaining." And after I talked to my dad one day, I said, "Why is this happening?" And of course, he found the best way to try to explain some of these things. But then, by the time I grew up, I now really understood that look, there are a lot of there's a lot of tolerance. Society tolerates to a very high level, you know, different forms of violence against women and young girls in the name of culture, in the name of tradition, in the name of religion, in the name of whatever you call it. And we are saying that violence against women and young girls is a no, no, no. Because a woman, a young girl, is also flesh and blood. Even our constitution, from a legal perspective, our constitution, which is the ground norm of the, uh, what keeps us together as a people, says that every Nigerian, man, woman, and child, is entitled to dignity of the human person, freedom from torture, freedom from discrimination. But in practice, what really happens? So all this together informed, you know, myself and five other ladies, in, in starting from was the end of 98, I mean, but precisely in January 1999, saying we need to set up an organization that will look into these issues, that will try to respond to these issues, that will try to raise public awareness of these issues with a view to us ultimately reading the society of all forms of violence against women. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I would also, yeah, I would like to add that I, I personally, as, as Josephine, I think if why I'm actually doing this is because I think this is what I grew up, I mean, as a, as, 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 as a teenager, the first shock came to me, actually. You know, like I said, the first shock was like 8, 9, but I didn't really understand what happened to that, my neighbor and all that. But the university, seen a lot of things happening to young girls. Because I come from a very, I came from a very protective home and family. So that's why it was really shocking to me. Maybe if I'd seen my father and mother fighting, I would have taken it as normal. Maybe... If one uncle had raped one of us in the house or we grew up to do something like that happened, maybe I'll take it as a way of life. It's a normal thing. You know, but for me it was a shock because I got to know, understand clearly what was going on. In my late teenage years, 17, 16, 17, 18, I was like, what's going on? You know, so personally, no. But I have people around me, I have friends, I have relations. But then, even then, I can't even say personally, no, I've not, because like I tell people, really, for as long as you're a woman in this society, this society being the African society, the Nigerian society, at one time or the other in your life, God help you, 
they are going to experience one form of violence or the other. This far, I may not have. I, can I tell myself that I'm out of, I'm out of the food? I can say that. Domestic violence knows no age. It knows no, it's not about how beautiful or how educated you are. We, we, we are living witnesses of the, of the scandal that involved the High Commissioner in Kenya last year with his wife. Last year, a young girl in Skybank was hacked down by her husband. Educated girl, brilliant young girl, at 29, working in a bank. You know? It knows no religion, it's not about Muslims or Christians. You know? So, even speaking, I cannot say, oh, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure I can't be. Or is it rape? Or is it widowhood practices? Old women have been defiled and raped. They are, I mean, recently we had some group of women who went to the Anambra State House, uh, State, Nubu State of Assembly, complaining that young men were raping them. You know, so it's not about. It's, it, it would be unfortunate if anyone, man, woman, you know, sits down and waits until it happens to him or her. Or to her. I mean, when I'm talking to men, I tell men that look, forget about women as wives and girlfriends. You know, it doesn't really matter. But there's no man who doesn't have a mother. You know, there's no man who doesn't have a, a sister. I mean, a daughter. Okay, even if you don't have a daughter or you don't have a sister, at least you have a mother. Mother is constant. Is a constant. So how would you feel if your mother is violated, even by your own father? How would you feel if your mother, every day, day in, day out, you see your mother being, being pronounced by your father? Or you go out, you come back, you see some three young men on top, I mean, <laughs> defiling your mother? Would you congratulate them and say, well done, thank you very much? I don't think so. So we need to take it seriously and not trivialize it the way, you know, so people would want to trivialize it and say, ah, come on, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal. Patriarchal factor. You know, you know, you know what, what I mean by that patriarchy, rule of the man, the man being seen as the ultimate, the final say, you know. And with that kind of thinking, you know, and, 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 and arrangements, it starts from even when a child is born. And that is why you see the socialization pattern. When a child is born, when a, a child is born, if you don't look at the genital, the genital area, you know if a child is a boy or a girl, because all children are born almost bowed. There's no more pierced in the ear, no breast, isn't it? Except to look at the genitals area, you know, this is a boy or this is a girl. But as they grow on, we, we here being society, we start feeding it from, and then when the child is born, the child is born blank. Nothing is in the head. A lot of people say there's no place like home. But at Limelight Hotel and Suites, we have a place that's just like home. Limelight Hotel and Suites is located in the serene and homely countryside of Agoiwoye, Ogun State. Limelight Hotel and Suites offers you nothing but the best in hospitality and facilities that you will not find anywhere. We have three bars, an oriental restaurant with a guarantee of uninterrupted power supply and reliable internet facilities, not forgetting our ATM machine and POS terminals to give you the ease of cashless fun. Come relax and retreat into the calm embrace of Limelight Hotel and Suites. For more information, log on to www.limelighthotel.com or email us on info at limelighthotel.com or call us on 0807-097-1904. Limelight Hotel and Suites. Taking as the child is growing on, it starts socializing the child. It starts putting things in their head. Come on, you are a boy. Come on, you are a girl. Come on, you shouldn't do this. A boy should not cry. Come on, you are a girl. You should be in the kitchen with your, you know. The socialization, that's where it starts. You start buying boys guns. Yeah? But sometimes I look at it and I say, we may not, we may just gloss over it. But some of the things we do, the way we bring up our children, goes a long way to, 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 to reflect what they will be in the future, really. To a large extent, you can't be you know everything I know, but to a large extent, the toys we buy them. You see, boys going to I mean, call it toys, but sometimes, in some ways, somehow the violence trick starts from there. You know? Who says a boy cannot cry? You know, and you see other things, you know, you see your young boy, you see a boy beating a girl. You yourself, why did you go and do this? He's a boy now. You justify it. 
instead of scolding the man, say you don't do that. So the socialization, that is where it starts from. You know, and this is informed by patriarchy, you know, this rule of the you know, So that is actually at the bottom. But I tell people that I am an African woman, I'm a Nigerian woman. I'm proud of African culture and I refuse to accept, but I refuse to accept that the African culture preaches violence against women. It doesn't. It doesn't. If anything, I think what we are seeing here more is more of even a function of development and and urbanization. It was even in traditional societies. I remember, even when I was growing up, I had an auntie who was married, and on a couple of occasions she went to the house in the, in the night with torn clothes, she would be holding her blouse like this, some little bruises, some bruises on her. She had a fight with her husband, beat her up or whatever. My parents would take her and keep in the house at night and say, I'm not going back, they're going to send for her. Is that, not the, is, that, is that not a function of, is that not a sign that the family are trying to, they are saying no to it? It's a sign of it. Even in traditional society, when a man beats a woman, women in society will boo him. A shameless man is a woman you have energy to beat. Go and look for your mate and beat. If a man in traditional society defiles a little girl, he may be made to walk naked. No such things were in, were in existence. But really, because of urbanization, you know, the, by nature, the urban areas, Lagos, for instance, in all urban cities, are, I mean, I call them faceless cities. Faceless because we don't know, nobody knows anybody. So we all, it's like everybody for himself, God for all of us. We just, everybody does what he or she likes. In a traditional society where yeah, everybody knows everybody to be great grandfather, great grandmother. I'm not saying crime was not happening there. I wasn't, I'm not saying this some of these things were not happening, but to a large extent, it could be traced. There's some families people know that these families are families of black people. Don't go there. These families are families of thieves. Don't marry them. You know, some of those things we've lost them gradually. So that is why it's also leading to all these problems we are we are having. So the African culture, I refuse. Culture, and besides, culture is not static. Culture is dynamic. Things are changing. The way we are redressed these days, the way we live these days, the, day we, the way we move around these days, it's not the way our forefathers and foremothers did. It's not. But we are changing, we are growing. So why, why is it that it's those aspects of culture that are detrimental to the rights of women and young girls? Give them inheritance rights, give them what where is that those aspects of culture we hold on to as if they are casting in the in cement and whatever and it's unchangeable. Culture is not static. Culture is dynamic, it changes with time, with events, with people, with issues as they come. So we need to be committed to that.